What's up guys, it's Coach Drew, and today I'm gonna to teach you guys eight drills that you can use to become a better shooter off the dribble. In my opinion, if you master these eight things, you won't need anything else to become a great knockdown pull-up jump shooter. The first thing we need to do is master our basic one-two pull-up pull jump shot, which means we need to focus on good footwork and a good clean pickup. So if I'm right here and I got the ball in my right hand, the ball is gonna hit at the same time as my left foot, that's the one in the one two. And then at the same time as my second step, the two in the one two is gonna be a clean pickup. What I mean by clean pickup is our hands are shot ready. So my hand is spread in the middle of the ball so that I can ultimately just go up and shoot a shot. So many times when shooters are struggling off the dribble, it's because when they pick up the ball, their hands are on the side and they're not shot ready. So on this first drill, all we're gonna do is simply dribble the ball, same time as our one, then step at the same time as our pickup on the two, and then we're gonna knock down the shot. So it's gonna be right here, one, two, and then jump up and shoot it, okay? The second drill that we're gonna do is now we've gotta work on awkward footwork drills because so many times in the game, we're not gonna be perfectly on balance when we have a defender and we have to throw them off before we pull up. So the second one we're gonna do is gonna be a dribble, hezzy one, two, pull up which means if I'm dribbling with my right hand, I would lunge forward with my right, acting like I'm driving to the basket. If I see my defender lunge downhill to take off that driving angle, I would get two, again, every time we're doing a one-two pull-up, our two happens at the same time as a clean pickup, boom, and then my hands are ready to knock down the shot. So our second one, the hezzy pull-up, would be dribble, one-two, and pull up. You notice on the hezzy, the reason we call it a hezzy pull-up and not just a one-two same foot pull-up is because the ball hits first, then the foot hits second. So the foot is delayed, which is why we call it a hezzy. If we did it at the same time, right there, it would just be a regular one-two pull-up with awkward footwork, okay? So our hezzy pull-up looks like this. Dribble, fake downhill, clean pickup. Notice I'm shot ready, hand under the ball, so we can knock down the shot. Our third one we need to do is one that you guys have probably seen Damian Lillard use a lot, where now we use an inside-out dribble, what I call a push-out dribble, because the ball is gonna act like you're faking this way, kind of like a half of an inside-out. You're gonna push forward, so ball and foot hit at the same time, bang, acting like you're driving downhill, and now we're gonna get our second step at the same time as our clean pickup and knock it down. So if I'm right here, it's again, ball and foot hit, and then pull up, okay? Every single time you notice it's a clean pickup, my hands aren't sliding once I pick the ball up, and I can knock down the shot right away. The fourth one that we need to do is making sure that we work on all the different cadences. So we need to work on a crossover pull up because anytime we do a crossover, the hands, you know, the ball's changing hands and we need to be able to get that clean pickup and knock it down. So I would simply take a dribble, I would fake this way first, one step, fake this way, second step, cross the ball over and then clean pickup and shot. Notice that the footwork is the exact same as kind of the one, two pull up. We just do a crossover first. But when I cross the ball over, watch this right here, one step and then this two is always at the exact same time. So a little more full speed, dribble, cross over, pick up and shoot. That's our next one that we have. The next one we have is a between the leg pull up, which is the exact same thing. Ball is gonna go between our legs at the same time as the one. Then we're gonna take two at the same time as the pick up and then knock it down. So if I'm right here, it's dribble, pick up, boom, and knock it down. Then we need a behind the back, because so many times in a game we pull the ball back behind our back or just simply pop behind our back and knock it down and we need that clean dribble behind our back into a clean pickup. Now I take a dribble behind the back and again, notice I'm right there, shot ready and pull it up. We've got two more that I really love. The first one that we do is a step back or a side step. This time the ball hits the opposite foot at the same time, boom. Then we get the ball in our shot ready position pull it to the side, and then we take our second step. Remember, we're allowed two steps, and then we knock it down. So if I'm right here, it's dribble, step, knock it down. If you're in a high school association or a league that does not allow kind of a side step or a hop back, what you'll have to do is delay the pickup a little bit. So now watch this hand if you're thinking, man, that's a travel coach, Drew. We don't get two steps. We only get one in our league. We would just dribble the ball, take the side step, then pick the ball up in our good shot ready position and knock it down. So that looks like this full speed. If you're in one of those leagues where the rest might get you, it's here and then pick it up and knock it down. And the last one we could do is a quick pullback, which would mean dribble our same foot, same hand, go forward, we sell the drive, we pull the ball back, one, two, and then knock it down. So if I'm right here full speed, dribble, step, boom, clean pick up and knock it down. Those are the drills that are gonna help you become a great shooter off the dribble.
What's up guys, it's Coach Drew, and today I'm gonna to show you guys six of the ways that Clay Thompson gets open so that he can get off his catch and shoot jumpers. The first one that he does is he's on the wing right here. Obviously his defender's in the gap, and what he does is relocates to the baseline corner, which we call a baseline drift. So he's standing here, his defender's kind of ball watching, he sprints down to the corner, catches it, gets on balance, and knocks it down. So that's a corner drift. Another one he does is basically the opposite, where now his defender's low, he starts in the corner, defender starts ball watching, and he does a corner lift. So he starts in the corner, he lifts up, he curls, catches, gets on balance, and knocks it down. Another one he does is if the ball is on the opposite side and he's in the slot position, and maybe one of his teammates drives middle, he relocates and shifts along the perimeter, gets on balance, and knocks it down. Notice the biggest key is moving without the ball and moving away from your defender so that ultimately if they get caught ball watching, they're in a bad position and have a longer closeout so we have more time to get on balance, catch and shoot, and knock down our shots. Another one he does is obviously the Warriors are an up-tempo team, so if you have them pushing in transition, is he just finds a three-point line and shoots a transition catch and shoot. He's one of the best in the league at sprinting full speed and then slowing down his last steps so that ultimately he can get his hips into a shot and knock it down. Two more that he does that are both out of the floppy set, and if you're not familiar with the floppy set, it's where it's a single double set, where there's basically two screeners and one screener sitting down here where Clay Thompson can go off either screen sets. Right here, a lot of times what he'll do is the first one is he'll curl. So if his defender is trailing him, he'll come off of this and then simply curl, keep the ball high, and catch and shoot before the defender can come back and recover and make a play on the ball. The final one that he does all the time is when they're in that single double floppy action set, is he starts to curl, and if he notices his defender cheats and tries to bust through and go over top, he plants his foot, gets on balance, and knocks down the shot in the corner. Those are the six reads that you can work on so that you can ultimately get more catch and shoot jumpers in games, and hopefully you've perfected your form and your shot so that when you get those shots, you knock them down so that you can be a more efficient scorer off the catch. What's up guys, it's Coach Drew, and today I'm gonna to teach you guys how to properly shoot a free throw. Now obviously there's a ton of different routines and a ton of different ways to shoot the basketball, but I'm gonna give you guys the steps to become a better knockdown free throw shooter. The first thing you need to do is have the same mental approach before you even step up to the line. I think that's one thing that's often overlooked. Just so you guys know out there, until you step into this white area, this paint, the referee cannot pass you the ball. So I would recommend you standing outside of the key making sure you get your breathing properly, you slow down your breathing, because sometimes it's a stressful situation when you have to step up and make a clutch shot. If you're you know, struggling with still breathing, just go down, tie your shoe, fix it up. That'll give you some more time to control your breathing. Once you're eventually mentally ready to go in and knock down the free throw, step up to the line and make sure you find your placement. There's a little nail on the floor that I always look at, and I line up my shooting foot with that nail. So I know every single time, now I'm directly in line so that I can line up my right hand, because I'm a right hand shooter, with the rim. So that's the second thing I do, is when I step up to the line, I find my placement on the floor, which is using that nail. Some people split the nail. I just like putting that toe right on the nail, and then obviously getting it however you want to and how you shoot your normal shot. Some players, like me, I shoot where I'm perfectly squared on along the perimeter, my normal shot is perfectly squared, so I'm gonna be perfectly squared on my free throw. If you shoot at 11 o'clock on your jump shots, you should shoot 11 o'clock on your free throws. Basically, you're gonna shoot your shot, but it's just stationary with no defenders on you and you're not rushed. The next thing you do once you get your placement down, and again, I'm squared, so I'm gonna get squared, is you receive the ball from the referee and do the same routine every single time. For me, I used to always catch the ball, take a deep breath, again, control my breathing and relax myself, I would take three dribbles where, again, I was rocking up and down so I got good rhythm. I would make sure my hand placement was perfect, hand in the middle of the ball. Again, I want that good rhythm. And then I would get the ball up, bending my knees, bending my hips, so that ultimately I have power and I'm under the ball. And then all you do is shoot your normal shot. Now, after you shoot your shot, you've got to make sure that you do a couple things. A lot of people pull back their shot. They're kind of aiming it. 
You want it to be just like a shot along the perimeter in a game. So you're going to fully snap your wrist straight at the rim. I always like to get my pointer finger. The ball should roll off these two fingers. But I like to get my pointer finger at the rim. I like to land high on my toes. And I almost want to be falling forward. I see players all the time that shoot their free throw and take a step back. What I like to do when I shoot my free throws is get my rhythm. So I do my routine. One, two, three. I get my rocking rhythm. Again, I'm controlling my breathing. I shoot my shot. And once I shoot, as soon as the ball goes through the rim, I almost like to take a step forward because I'm pushing the ball forward. I'm making sure I never miss short. I'm making sure I get the ball high and soft over the rim so that ultimately I make more free throws. So again, control my breathing, control my breathing. The referee would have the ball. I would get my alignment set up. The referee would pass me the ball, take my deep breath, relax, just take my three dribbles, eyes on the rim so that I can really see that rim, knock it down high and soft, take that step forward to the rim so that I know that I can see it consistently knock down free throws. That's my favorite way to make the free throws. It helped me make a lot when I was playing college and high school basketball. I think if you do those steps, you'll find greater results in games when you're at the free throw line for pressure moments. What's up guys, it's Coach Drew. Today I'm gonna give you one of my favorite NBA shooting challenges that you guys can use as a drill in your workouts to improve your catch and shoot shooting. So many times in games, slippage occurs when we get fatigued, we get tired, we have to battle on defense, we're playing long minutes, etc. And so we want to make sure we can squish the ball as many times as we can so that ultimately if there is a little slippage in games, we're still maybe hitting the rim and rattling at home instead of missing left, right, long or short. So the idea of this game is to swish as many as you can. It's called baseball shooting. If you've played baseball, it'll make a lot of sense. If not, I'm going to help you explain the rules of baseball so that you understand the drill. I'm going to be in the corner and we're going to have nine spots representing the nine innings just like in a baseball game. When you shoot it, if you shoot and miss a shot, it's an out. If you shoot and make a shot, it's a base hit. If you shoot and swiss a shot, it's a home run. So if you miss the first one, that's one out. If you make it, you've got a man on first. If you make it again, you've got a man on first and second. There's still one out. If you swish it, now you have three runs, still one out. At each of the nine spots, representing the nine innings, you get three outs, just like an inning in baseball. And so once you get three outs, you move on to the next spot. You're gonna shoot in the corner, then you're gonna shoot the low wing, then you're gonna shoot the wing, then you're gonna shoot the high wing, then the top of the key, and then the same four spots on the opposite side, those are gonna make up our nine spots. Some people ask, what if you're not swishing them and getting home runs, can you still score? Yes. If you get four base hits in a row, you'd have a man on first, then a man on second, a man on third. And if you got another base hit, you'd basically drive them home. You'd still have bases loaded, and you'd get one run, just like in a baseball game. So it's identical to the ruling of baseball. Just know that a miss is an out, a swish is a home run, and a make is a base hit. You're going to try to get as many runs possible in the nine innings, so the 27 outs, you basically get 27 misses to score as many runs as possible. Let's see who can make the highest score in baseball shooting. That's perfect. One run. Man on first. Man on first and second. One run, no outs. That hit the rim, base is loaded. Man comes home, base is loaded, two runs. One out. Base is loaded, two runs. Swish, six runs, one out. Swish, seven runs, one out. Man on first. Man on first and second, seven runs, one out. Swish, now we got 10. Two outs, 10 runs. Swish, 11 runs. Man on first, 11 runs, two outs. Swish, now we got 13 runs. Man on first, 13 runs. Boom, that's three outs, so I would have 13 runs after the first inning. Now I would repeat the same steps at all other eight innings and see how many runs I can get in the total nine inning period. 